Welcome to Super Movie Brothers. Let's start the show. Welcome to Super Movie Brothers. I'm your host, Super Movie Brother Dave. I'm your host, Super Movie Brother Jay. And this time around, we have our weekly roundup type episode. Me and Jay are going to talk about this week's movie news, what we've been watching, and we have a very special movie homework because last week, let everyone listen, I assigned you Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974, sure. Toby Hooper. You're going to give your impressions on that. Mm -hmm. You assigned me the A24 movie starring Robert Pattinson, Good Time, which is streaming on Amazon Prime right now. Yep. So we're going to get into that later later on for our movie homeworks but jay let's get into what you've been up to man what have you been up to this week what have i been up to i am still in the process of transitioning careers and doing a lot of learning of new equipment and also just working the bar that Boring. brewery okay let's get on to what i was up to uh, yeah i haven't been doing <laughs> shit my my what i have been doing is going to be nothing but dog shit for the next month or two so currently i am i am waiting to go to disney world yes. me and lauren or going to Disney As you World hold a lightsaber. Week. I'm holding a lightsaber, Jay, because <laughs> when I get to Disney World, I get to build a new one. I'm, <sighs> I'm currently holding my Hasbro lightsaber that I made about four years ago when they had the old build a lightsaber, which is the old plastic like ones. And I really enjoy this lightsaber. I really like the one. This one was very hard for me to craft because this one has the curved hilt like mm, Count Dooku. Mm -hmm. And I had to go to three different places, three different build a lightsaber stations in Disney World before I I found the one with the curved hill. But after I found it, I'm so fucking happy that I did. But now I get to go and do the whole new experience at Galaxy's Edge, and I get to do the whole thing. Duty sent me uh, Duty from Shaken Not Nerd. If you're not checking out Shaken Not Nerd, you really should. You can definitely check out their their sister podcast, which is, plays on the same feed, Shaken Not Noob. Of course. The reason I'm doing this plug is because I'll get into something with that later on. But um, we were talking about like what type of lightsaber I'm going to build, and he sent me a picture, which is all the different choices I get to have. So in my mind, Jay, I've already built that lightsaber. I just have I'm to sure go did. there and make it a fucking react. Reality. Oh, you'll, you'll but kill it, man. We're recording this like three or four, uh, four what days. What color are you going with this Green. Time? Always green. Always green. Okay. Always green. No other color but green. Lauren always does violet. I do green. All right, mm. that's, that's the way it is. Of course, I'd go red. <laughs> of course you would. Of course you would. Of course you would. Because everyone who has an STD should, would be a Sith. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, we're leaving in a few days. Uh, I'm getting really excited. So uh, our recordings may like start to sound a little like off to everybody because um, no, honestly, like we're, we're I, we probably a few days late on this episode coming out. Definitely a few days late between episodes because uh, I've been doing so much to just prepare for going on vacation. And we also will be doing over on Patreon. Me and Lauren are doing our top five like rides to do in Walt Disney World just to get us a little jazz up for going over there so uh we're getting we're, we're, we're getting in full disney mode oh, on top of your disney plus streaming service exactly you know dude. and i've you've been, been watching doing, all the classics i've been watching a lot of stuff over there mandalorian and we'll talk about i'll talk know, about that and all that in, stuff in what are yep. you watching this week so th that's really what i'm gearing up for all right Jay, let's head over let's get into what are you watching what are you watching what are we watching He's trying to watch some illegal channels. Oh, he's watching. No, 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 go past this. Past this part. In fact, never play this again. All right, so what are you watching, man? Uh, me and you have been kind of watching the same thing. The Crown, season three, just the Crown. came out. Loving it. I'm loving so it. So good. It's it's unbelievable. I don't know who who's the showrunner for the Crown, but they are fantastic. So, they keep the, I got the, the the. It's just I I was nervous. I really was nervous leading up to this series because or season because of how great the castings were. So previously. I got I got to say this. Like I liked seasons one and two. I, I like this slightly less than those two. Uh, I don't think that the I I agree with that. I think that the material is less historically significant than than they have than the first two seasons. Um so if you're someone who's a big history buff like I am, yeah. there's there's a little bit less historical significance to some of this stuff, but but I think the characters are more fleshed out and I think we're getting a better sense of the 
dirty underside and the underbelly to the crown that we and, weren't getting in the yeah. first it, a little bit of it was there but and, and i do like that i like the, the lived in aspect of these characters because you know they've right, they're been seasoned. aged they're, they're seasoned, seasoned more right, now right so it's not so much trial and error they've been through a lot i gotta say my favorite character this season though is princess anne she was a great surprise. Um, I love when they bring her in to discuss something with her. Great and like, surprise. We have some difficult questions to ask you, and she's like, "So you want to, f- so you want to make sure I'm not going to get too emotional." And then she tells the whole thing, and she goes, "Am I finished? Was that too emotional for you?" And gets up and walks away. <laughs> she is very much Philip's daughter, I, dude. I, I I looked her up, man. I was like, "Is this for she's real? So who is good. this girl? She's My so good. God!" The guy who plays Charles is really good as well, but but it's also no. But that's the thing. This it's 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 a mirror, right? With Princess Margaret. Oh, it's you and me. And you and me. No, Prince, but, but what I say is like. But I mean, as far the as the difference, like, it's like it's like you and me. Well, sure, but but, but also with um, uh, Queen Elizabeth and Princess Margaret, right? The same thing. It it should have been or could have been flip flopped. Well, I think that's the theme of the as entire- far as who was going to be the king or who's going to be the queen, right? I, th- I think it's the theme of the entire season that, like, in the Windsor household, like in the House of Windsor, there's always one the that first shines born. Right, but there's always is, one that shines bright, and there's always one that's a little bit more dull. Right, right, and like, uh, and Philip spells it out. He goes, you know, for for every Queen Victoria, there is a King George, or for every sure. for every for you know for every King David, who's her uncle, you know, or King Edward, there is a King George the Sixth, your father, and then for every Margaret, there is a an Elizabeth. Right, like so, like it's it's always like the duality of their personalities. There's yeah. always one that's very staunch, very British, and one and, and and very regal. But there's also one that's regal in a more outlandish, more people person, more people pleasing mm-hmm. type sense that is more fantastical. And they're really getting into that this season of what it means to be a ruler and showing you two different sides of ways to rule. And there's no right or wrong Certainly. way, really, but. That's one of the things I'm really enjoying is the dynamics of the characters, and they're, they're doing a great job of it. Yeah, and it's, it's it's honestly it really was very good casting. Again, if you're not watching The Crown, why the fuck not? Yeah, you need to. Why see this. the fuck not? You have a Netflix account. Why aren't you watching it? It's worth it. Hundred uh, percent. Other than that, Jay, I've been strolling through my Disney Plus. And- yeah, I, I kind of, I wanted to pause on the Mandalorian. Um, for some odd reason, after watching the first episode, I realized I think I would rather binge it. Binge it? I think that's, I think that's good. I'm gonna binge it when I'm done watching it episodically. I'm gonna binge it again. Yeah. Okay. All right, because I'm just going to do a straight up binge I think right with, before we do a review. I think with 30, 40 minute long episodes, that will wind up being about a five, it's six so hour binge. Right, right. It's not that bad. It's like maybe two nights. You know, I'm, I'm not worried about that. I'm going to take care of that. Episode and, three just finished. I will say there's a big turning point okay. in episode three. However, uh, I like episode three a whole lot more than episode two. Uh, it, n- nothing so far has really stood out as like episode one, but I think episode one was so atmospheric, so world building that mm. like it draws you in so well. And that's what a pilot should do. Uh, so that, that's why it stands above the other two so far, but I'm still really, really, really enjoying it. I can't wait to see where it ends up. I got some ideas in my head from yeah. watching the trailers, some things I haven't seen yet, but there's a thing that happens towards the end of episode three that was just pure nerdgasm for me, man. Like, there's just so much going on and so many things that I love about Star Wars going on at the exact same moment that I was like, oh my God. And John Favreau lends his voice to another Mandalorian in that episode. Does he? Yeah, uh, he's. Uh, you haven't seen it yet, so I can't really, I can't really tell you. And I don't want to spoil anybody else who isn't watching or doesn't have Disney Plus because I don't feel like throwing up a spoiler warning for us a minor two to three minute conversation. But it, it, it it's great. Uh, and the reason I knew it was John Favreau was because I watched all of the Clone Wars and he was voiced Pre Vizsla, who was a Mandalorian warrior in in that. And this guy has the same exact voice, but him and our Mandalorian, the Mandalorian character stand off and they pull blades out on each other and the blades are like vibrating. Like, and it's like, ugh, 
It's the first time we've ever seen a vibro blade on screen mm. in a Star Wars thing, and it's fucking cool. It's fucking cool <laughs> for me. Uh, so uh, definitely check out The Mandalorian. Still highly recommended by us. Still really, really enjoying it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's my TV watch of the year, right? But like, it's it's definitely in the running for it. And other than that, on Disney+, Plus, I've been rewatching some old star wars stuff because we're here jay yeah the next big thing oh i know i'm going i'm I'm going right around the corner i'm going to galaxy's edge this week and i'm going to spend so much time in like in that star wars world and then i'm going later on in the month and um, also stay tuned because we're talking about maybe doing a top five star wars star wars we're gonna be doing a top five star wars topic you know coming up so while I'm on vacation, that'll be something that plays while I'm on vacation. Mm-hmm. So I, I've I've been ready to rewatch Rebels and Clone Wars and the animated series that they have on Disney Plus, and I've been rewatching them with my daughter. And it warms my heart that today she asked her, she was talking to her mom, and she's like, "I want to watch the Star Wars thing." And my, her mom's like, "I don't know what you're talking about. What Star Wars thing?" And she's like, "It's the one with the girl who's a pilot and she has long pointy ponytails. That's Harrison Dulles." She's the pilot of the ghost. And she's like, and it's got the other girl. She's got a helmet and she's got guns and she's got purple hair. That's Sabine Wren. And mm. her mom like had to text me and goes, what is she talking about? And she goes, ah, that's Star Wars Rebels. When she couldn't sleep, we stayed up one night watching it. And she's like, okay, she wants to watch that all the time now. <laughs> so <laughs> apparently I'm going to have to give her mom our Disney Plus password so that she can uh, jump on and start watching Shh, that with her. Don't tell her. Disney's listening. They're Disney's right listening. Yeah, they're like, ah, you can't share passwords. <laughs> I already share it with people, so I. I, I actually sh- heard that's a rumor. I heard that they're looking into uh, trying to get rid of that the capability sharing. of the sharing. They were trying to, yeah, do away with it. I'm sure everyone wants to. I'm sure, like, when HBO Max launches soon, like they're they're gonna want to mm-hmm. do that as well. But it's honestly, gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard to do that. For honestly, them. if if I'm paying for it. It should be my choice whether I share it with somebody or not. I understand that that's that's dollars lost, but I mean, I share I share an account with with uh, Chris Brayton from I, I like to like things, and I'm sure if he had an account that I didn't have, he would share it with me. You know what I mean? I, I, it all goes it all goes round, and I could see where they say it's like kind of like piracy, like in a way, but I don't really think so. Uh, but I mean, other than that, I've been really enjoying my Star Wars rewatches. I. Yeah. I've also been playing Star Wars Jedi The Fallen Order uh, on my Xbox. I, yeah, I have an Xbox. Sorry for all you PS4 fans. Uh, I'm really enjoying that. It's buggy as hell. Today, I was on the planet of Kashyyyk. I got into an elevator. The elevator didn't render, and I kind of fell through the map, <laughs> and I got lost. Uh, I've had moments where, like, I'll, Someone go find Dave. I'll come back from a save point, and... There will be no enemies around. I'll I'll start walking, and then all of a sudden, the enemies just appear all around me, and I get killed. It's buggy as shit. I'm waiting for Respawn and EA to, to do a patch, but I'm really enjoying the story. I love the characters, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So if you're a video gamer, uh, I highly recommend that you check out Jedi Fallen Order, and I recommend that you go over to youtube and you check out shaken not noob and you check out their review of jedi fallen order there because i pretty much feel the same way they feel or you can listen to their episode uh, of shaken not nerd which just came out where they were talking about it so search that in your podcast listening app or search it on youtube shaken not nerd and you'll see the review for it there because the way i feel about it is pretty much how they feel about it so instead of me rediscussing what they discussed i'll just push people over there to check out our good friend dude yeah. all right jay Let's head over. Let's get into some news. All right, Jay. First news story. All you Star Wars fans. There's going to be merch for you this holiday season. First up, for all you enjoying The Mandalorian and checking out all the memes of the little baby Yoda that's going on over there, Mm -hmm. you can buy that merch. It'll be available before the holidays. Disney wants you to know that. Okay. 
<laughs> Disney wants you to know that there's going to be Baby Yoda merch. Big time. For you to buy. And it's so smart. It's out there. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money from the movie is made. Spaceballs the flamethrower. Spaceballs the bed sheets. And my favorite, Spaceballs the plush toy. <laughs> May the Schwartz be with you. Love it. Uh. <laughs> And also, Disney would like you to know that there is a, going to be Porgs in The Rise of Skywalker, Jay, because in the international poster, a Porg can be seen in the bottom left-hand quarter. And Porg toys were one of the biggest selling items that came out of The Last Jedi. So, of course, they're going to bring them back for The Rise of Skywalker because it's all about that merch. All about that merch. All about, that, about merch. that merch. Next news story. All right. We got some... Plot hints for The Conjuring 3, which will have Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson returning. And this is going to involve the story where they are in England again, just like The Conjuring 2. But they will be tracking and, uh, I guess, exercising a werewolf demon. Uh, this is one of the stories that you can find in many of the books that have been published by Ed and Lorraine Warren. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you wanted to check that story out before seeing the movie, find out how accurate the movie is. This is the one story I hoped they didn't do. Okay. I feel it's a little... Why is that? Because I feel it tips its hat a little bit too much at the fact that Ed and Lorraine Warren were kind of charlatans. that They were kind of just making shit up as they went along. I, I, I like the idea that the movie set them up in this place where the paranormal is very real. But then you, now you're asking me to believe that both werewolves exist and that werewolves are not yeah. people. They're demons, right? Yeah. I, I feel like it's, it's going a little bit too far. I think there's other stories you could have told. One specifically that takes place in uh, Pennsylvania, in, in central Pennsylvania, that I think is a very intriguing story that they could have weaved in. The fact that that is their that most, would be cool that it is their most controversial investigation because many that that's that that's the story that most people point to when they say Ed and Lorraine Warren are fucking charlatans because no one has ever been able to recreate the paranormal activity that they reported seeing at this farmhouse in in central Pennsylvania. Mm. So I thought that that was a better place to take because I think it's more interesting to kind of play with that aspect of them. I think this right here, it's it's a, it's almost too showy, right? It's almost like it's it's almost too much. You're asking the audience to believe too much yeah. at this point. So either way, and you know, that's the stuff that just rubs me the wrong way, right? Either yeah. way, I'm gonna. I enjoy the series, so I'm still. I'm still looking forward to it. And this will be the first Conjuring movie that doesn't have James Wan behind it. It's gonna have Michael Chavez behind it. So I'm kind of like, I, I'm a little worried because now the story is sounding a little ridiculous, and now you have a new director behind it. And you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not terribly familiar with Michael Chavez, but his director his director credits is not deep. Like he did The Curse of La Llorona recently, which was not a good Never movie. Never even heard of it. Yeah, it was a horror movie that came out over the summer. I it wasn't good. So now like I'm 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 kind of worried about this franchise that like I've really grown to like over the past couple years and I'm not really sure if the direction they're going in is something I want to follow as a fan. I'll still pay to see it. I'll give them their but chance. But do you think because they're revamping it and hyping it up that maybe they're behind this new story idea or the new script? I don't know what they're trying to do, to be honest with you. I just think that that it, it it's it's a new it's a new director behind it. It's a very different story than what we've gotten before. Mm -hmm. So uh, it has me a little just apprehensive about it. Where if if they said James Wan was back, I'd probably walk into that theater day one, no problem. Now I'm going to be a little bit more apprehensive. I'm going to be a little bit more attentive to the marketing that I'm seeing from it. Sure. Before I I get yeah, it, you're right. going to be you'll be a little bit more critical on what you see in the trailer and stuff definitely. Like that. And I'd like to say that that's you know, and hopefully that doesn't carry over to me seeing the film. Next news story. <laughs> All right, so we know that Channing Tatum was supposed to be playing Gambit. We know that since Disney and Fox merger, they've pretty much canceled that. Gambit's not happening. But Channing Tatum is involved in another project. He is going to now be producing a superhero TV show that is based on the 1990s superhero comic The Max, which was published by Image Comics. Now, this is one of those 
in your face, so bold that it's almost ridiculous, but just bloody and R-rated enough to really get your goose going back in the early 90s. So think Spawn, but a little bit more cartoonish and fun. And and that's exactly what they're going to be producing. All right. I'm intrigued. Yeah, so am I. I. I am. Now he's there's no rumors that he's starring in it or anything like that. He he's just producing it. But he is involved in this project. And the Max, it's one of those things where it's like I read the first twelve issues. It was it was pretty cool. It was edgy at its time, but like it's very dated by the nineties. So I'm kind of curious how this is gonna transfer to today, where a lot of things that we're seeing in media, where a couple years ago it was all about the eighties, now a lot of things are are about reliving the nineties. I want to see yeah. what they do with that. I, I think I'm intrigued with Channing Tatum as a producer. Yes, you know, so I. I, I think I think he has a pretty good uh, finger on the pulse of what's going to work and what's not right now. Right, he's not as much as Seth Rogen does. Who, who, by sure. the way, but just seeing what he did with much, the Magic Mike franchise, for example, for tr- yeah, um, for sure. you know, who would have ever thought that that was going to be or to, to be actually a good film and and, uh, and then also box office wise as well. First one, not second one. Second one's pretty garbage, but first yeah, one's but it, really well. But done. the but the second one knew what it was and it kind of ramped it up to it, 11 it, it knew who was buying tickets is what it knew. sure exactly <laughs> speaking of tickets jay next news story <laughs> elizabeth banks jay wants to blame you and me yeah for not for buying us not tickets going out there and not see recording a review episode or anything here's here's the thing i saw the charlie's angels this trailers. Stuff, i know it looks like derivative tripe piece of shit that stars somebody who I'm particularly not interested in, Kristen Stewart. If you were along with two other unknowns, right? And Elizabeth Banks, like honestly, my draw to that movie was Elizabeth Banks was in the movie and that she was directing because I like her as a director. Yeah. But then I get this thing where she's like, "Well, men just don't want to see a strong female-led cast leading an action movie, and that's why tickets weren't sold." That's oh, hold on. First off. I have, A, never been to the theaters in the six years I've been with my wife. I've never been to the theaters without her, practically. Right. And she didn't want to see this shit. Right. So why in the fuck, if she doesn't want to see it, would I want to go see it when I think it looks like garbage? Like, right. the trailers look like garbage. The, 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 the Make mar- a better movie? The, I mean, like, that's what, what it comes it, down that's to. That's really all it comes down so, to, I think. It's not like this is getting rave reviews or anything like that. People are going, eh. And who knows? What maybe, who knows what the context was? Maybe this was blown out of proportion a little bit or Very taken possible. out of context. I don't know. I like Elizabeth Banks as a person a lot, but, so right. it was really surprising but to here's hear the this. Thing. Here's the thing: but, Captain Marvel had a little bit of substance to it. Mm. Female lead, good action movie. Men went and paid money to see it, and women. Wonder Woman, same exact fucking. Thing. It has nothing to do with females in the lead. Why yeah. we're not going to like Kristen Stewart has this this movie underwater coming out. I want to see that. It's that a, looks a lot more intriguing. It's a. I'm intrigued by it. It's a feel. I'm not intrigued by a Nobody movie. Nobody wants to see Charlie's Angels. I'm right. It's, and not. But the thing is, like, it's a reboot. If they of did, a reboot if, of. A, but but if they did, they would have to do it exactly how they did before. Throw actual three stars in right. the leads. You can't have make it Kristen fun, make Stewart, it who's cheek. really not that bankable. Here's why I didn't want to see unknowns. it. Based on the trailers that I saw, this looked like it was trying to take itself a little bit too seriously. If they were a little bit more tongue-in-cheek, if they were a little bit more fun with, with what I was seeing... I might have gone and I might have gone and seen it, but everything I saw just looked like you're just you're just doing something that is going to wind up being a mediocre action film that I 100 percent can wait until it's streaming free for somewhere, right? Or it's all my HBO, and yeah. and that that's what it was. Will I watch this movie? Sure. And I think that's what everybody else saw. But now I'm less likely to see it because you fucking blamed me and you, Jay, for not seeing it. When it's like, do I think women have it right in this country? Fuck no. Right? That do I think that we live in a world where straight white males have set the rules for so long? Of of course, I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just disagreeing with the fact that that's not the reason we went to go 
see it. Yeah, don't, not... be, don't be pointing your fingers to, <laughs> exactly. to, to something so specific as that. Exactly. Exactly. I, 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 more I think it. you're right. This may have had something to do with the fact that this was blown out of proportion. Uh, someone in an interview asked her a question, and she may have said this in a tongue-in-cheek manner that has now been blown exactly. out of proportion. Exactly. And that's how the media works, unfortunately. And hence <laughs> us talking about it. And especially for someone like that who's a comedian, you know, and she is pretty sarcastic as a person. So that could have But she's done the been... Pitch Perfect movies, and I like those. I went and saw those sure. movies. And, and those are female-led movies. And they are box office successes. Well, other than the third one. But those were those were those were successful movies that I went and saw because I liked the female leads in it. I like Anna Kendrick. I everything I look at for Charlie's Angels just made me go, huh. Yeah. Next news story. RJ, uh, we got some more The Batman casting news. You shared this one with me. John Taturdo. Let me tell you something, Pandeo. You pull any of your crazy shit with us, you flash a piece out on the lanes, I'll take it away from you and stick it up your ass and pull the fucking trigger till it goes click. Jesus. You said it, man. Nobody fucks with the Jesus. (laughs) Gotta love him. (laughs) Is gonna be playing Carmine Falcone. And I cannot wait, because... I think he's perfect for this role. He is. It's. I got to tell you, like, it, even if this is a terrible script, at least it's going to be well acted. He is such a good actor. He such is such a good actor. He is. I, I can't I'm, stop thinking about this him. This ensemble as, that they're. I can't oh, stop thinking about him together. as Jesus in, <laughs> in the Big Lebowski. Lebowski. So I, I mean, I'm looking forward to this, dude. I'm really liking everything I'm hearing from. From 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 this movie, Dude, man. I'm psyched. Seen not frame one of it. Don't know what the bat suit looks like. Don't even care because like I'm pretty sure, no matter what, the shit will be acted the fuck out of it. Like that's that. Like that's the thing. I a shitty script may even be turned into halfway decent because of the caliber of people who are being brought exactly. into it. And, and you had Matt Reeves behind it, writing and directing. I mean, how, come on. How bad could it be? Next news story. <laughs> Speaking of DCJ, uh, Black Adam movie, which we finally started oh, yeah. getting some some actual uh, not not the photos from set or anything. They're not filming yet, but they are releasing some some pre production art and everything like that. They've also revealed that members of the Justice Society will be in the film, which has me extremely excited, man, because I'm kind of hoping for Hawkman. I, you know, I'm kind of hoping for Dr. Fate. Like there's, there's some deep dive DC characters who they can now get into because of Shazam and Black Adam being in it. And because Shazam will not be a big part of it because, you know, Mr. Marvel will not be, be a big part of it. I, I'm, you know, he maybe a cameo role, but you know, this isn't the big movie that ties those two together. That's probably the next one coming. It has me excited because this is the type of deep level comic book stuff that I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. The stuff that Marvel is dabbled in and has has delighted us. I'm hoping DC can dabble in and delight us as well. I'm looking for some really dynamic characters who they can really flush out because there's not a whole bunch of backstory that comes with them where people go, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> I know there's like hardcore DC fans out there and I'm one of them too. But when it's a character like like the Justice Society of America, I'm okay with some liberties being taken with it as long as it's in service of a good story. So I look forward to seeing some of that. And we have more DC News, Jay. Next news story. All right, this is the big one. So reportedly, a sequel was in the works for Warner Brothers. Now, I say reportedly because nothing's been confirmed. No studio head from Warner Brothers. They can either confirm or deny. Exactly. And Todd Phillips has stepped forward and said, look, there's no sequel coming. Let me clarify. I am not aware of a sequel coming, but a billion dollars sails a lot of fucking ships, sir. And th- and I think that's what it comes down to is... Uh, they as, have to at least entertain the idea. As a studio, you can not ignore the fact that this movie made a billion dollars. As a studio, it makes money. Now, the other part of that rumor most was... Money, uh, most um, films that they actually try to make or expect a billion dollars are normally films that they put in three hundred million dollars right. or something into a film, and this one was maybe eighty. 
um, or maybe a, close to a hundred. I think for, it was sixty after after marketing and everything like that. Like I, I, not a lot of money. A lot of money. It's the high, the, the most profitable film in the genre by far. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And as a studio, you can't ignore that. And I, I get that. It's all about it's all about. And you business. have to keep it the same way. If you do a sequel, you have to keep right. it in the same kind of vein. But as far as Todd Phillips knows or has been talked to about it, he's not involved in a sequel. Joaquin Phoenix is not confirmed for any type of sequel. In fact, the rumor is that they would be doing a sequel to it, but more like its own DC black label type sequel where they're going to follow a different Batman villain. And Jay. Yeah. I don't need this to be tying in with Matt Reeves. I don't think it will. I don't think it will. I think it, it, and if anything, it'll loosely and tangentially think of it as a spiritual sequel mm-hmm. to it. I think that's more or less what they were trying to and get I, across. I, I can, I can get behind it. And then guess what? I think this is the number one thing that I think people need to start getting more comfortable with, which is, it doesn't all have to add up. It doesn't have to be right. in the same world. It doesn't have to link up um, years wise. It's don't, like, oh well, right. don't, oh, this was shot in uh, 1979, I think. Look, blah, 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 ju- and just how, how I feel about religion. It's all about good ideas just more so a than a yeah. dogmatic law. As long as it's a good right? film, not everything has to tie it's together. Okay. Just enjoy your singular experience, yeah, and if it exactly. ties into something else, get gleeful about that when it comes. Don't look forward to it and don't push for it down the line. Right. Jay, this. This brings us to our question of the week. You could ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? It just raises too many questions. Excuse me. I'd like to ask you a few questions. The answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. RJ, I asked everybody on Twitter that rumors are, after the Joker movie's success, that DC and Warner Brothers are developing a sequel, and Todd Phillips is returning. This comes after weeks of statements that there is not going to be a sequel. What do you think? Are you interested in a Joker sequel? Now, like I said, since then, we've known that Todd Phillips said, I'm not connected to it. Like, there's nothing coming out about that, but we did get some responses to this early on this well, week. So, at Contrarian Prime from the Contrarians podcast said, not interested in a sequel but to be fair to be fair to be fair to be fair i wasn't particularly interested in a joker movie to begin with and i wouldn't say i regret watching it i just don't love it the same way other people do and we'll get into my thoughts on the joker a little bit but nick from epic film guys say it's gonna be garbage it's gonna be garbage Gabbage. It could be. Duty from Shaking Up Nerd said, no, not really. Paul from the Countdown Pod said, nope. <laughs> These are very short answers. Uh, Steve from Everything I Learned from Film Podcast said, meh. <laughs> I mean, like. This is exactly what I thought it would be. Right? You know why? Because even in so, like, well, we'll get into it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Sean Faust from What Does It Matter Podcast said, I think it's a perfect standalone, but. Why would you try to recapture the magic? You can't relive moments in your life, son. I agree, Sean. One Giant Leap for Geeks said, nope, not interested. I'm in seeing more from this version of the character. He's too inept to be a clown prince of climb. He's just crazy, and that's not as interesting to me, in my humble opinion. And then we'll get into the who I would rather see a film about than, than another Joker towards the end here. Top 5 said, no, not at all. At Movie Reviews and 20 Questions said, nope, I don't like it. <laughs> Binge Movie said, we don't need a sequel. It works on its own. Death we by haven't film? had one yes yet. Death by Film Podcast said, first one wasn't all that good, so big old pass on that sequel, sir. Uh, and Paul Montague says, you do not speak for all of us, sir, responding to Death from Film, calling it a Golden Globe winner. It's going to win for Best Comedy or Musical. I don't think you can call this movie a comedy. I think this is going to be in the drama category yeah. for yeah. sure. So I think that that comment's flawed right there. Dark Crow said he would rather see a One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest riff in Arkham Asylum. That could be fun. Reimagine group sessions with with Victor Zaz, the Riddler. That would Hatter. that would fit into the vein of of this Joker world. Exactly. I and like that. Idea. I even responded to him. I said I could see the ventriloquist being Danny DeVito's character of Martini from mm. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, Josh Bellatine said, firstly, 
it made so much money for them not to green light a sequel. Even if they have to bring in a different director, I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that Phoenix would be down to do more. That's not 100% confirmed. Just because he says he's open to the idea doesn't and mean that's not really an answer. Doesn't mean he's open to this idea, whatever sure. idea comes out the pipe. And then finally, Alex from, from the Contrarians podcast says, Depends. Will this one be good? <laughs> implying that the last one wasn't and yeah i mean look that was jay there was barely a yes in there and i can't help but agree with the people listening i i don't agree i don't want a sequel i don't think it warrants it i don't think it's anything that i want i I want to see especially i don't want you to recapture that however the idea of doing another dc black label with a different director different villain different actor different story stuff like that that's more of a spiritual successor to it Mm -hmm. more so than trying to relive it i'm down for well of course if you like one of the comments was like i would like to see a man bat movie and i said actually hold on dr langstrom creating the man bat formula for himself just imagine Edward Norton or someone of the ilk playing Dr. Langstrom. And when he turns into man bat, you get Doug Jones Mm. to be in all that makeup and act as the man bat and stuff like that. Like, you know, there's ways. What I'm saying is there's a depth and wealth of characters that you could do this to. Exactly. Don't go back to the same. Well, and I think that's another well. I think that's essentially what Todd Phillips and Joaquin actually wanted to do. They wanted to make a good movie, a good standalone movie, so that other characters can get, sh- you know, the light shined on them as well. And I think that's what all the no's are for. It's like, okay, well, but also, lightning in a bottle once. We we went out, we paid our money, we all saw it. We feel differently. A lot of people, some people like it, some people don't like it, some people um, love it. But it, you know, it's it's one of those films where it is a kind of standoffish kind of film. Like you, do you really want to dive into this exact world again with this character? Because I don't need to, Jay, I've returned to it now. I've seen it twice. I liked it less the second time I saw it than I did the first time I saw it. And I realized that the movie hinged on Joaquin Phoenix performance. But once I take away my Marvel at his performance, the story lacks a whole lot of substance. Honestly, it really does. And it's a pretty poor portrayal of mental health in the United States. And I was not crazy about that. So, well, but, but, but at that time, it was pretty accurate. Uh, look, there's look things the, I love the thing about is, it. there's things I love about the movie. There's it's things not that I, something I that I think it's going to be successful the fact when it comes is, back again. As movie fans and all these people who are responding are movie podcasts or people who listen to this show or movie sure. fans. We don't want it. We don't want it. No, we don't. But if we go do a it, different route. but if you do an Arkham. Go a different. If you do something like, I like that, the, I, I like that idea. I loved that idea. Now that's something more of interesting. them doing like a a freaking therapy session yeah. with all the different villains and stuff like that, minus a Batman. Jay, there's an episode of Batman the Animated Series. It's just like that. All the villains sitting around playing poker, and Batman actually is wearing a mask as, and he's joined in the poker game and stuff like that it's a it's a fantastic episode i would love something like that a showcase of the villains yeah but you don't get too heavy into the action you don't get too same, heavy into same the, thing make it you know 50 60 million dollar film tons of don't fun. be going crazy just have fun just, just ground it just and have, have fun, fun. Yeah, ground it, make it gritty, whatever. Just, ju- ju- just have fun with it, but don't try to do the same thing over again. No. The second you, you try, you to, just can't. Second you try to replicate something, you, you, you immediately devalue this, it. This, you devalue. It's it. not that kind of film anyway, right? You know, it's just not. It's it's a it's a performance showcase of an inspired Joker. It's really all it was. You know, it's very singular. It has it had nothing to do with sequel written all over it. it nothing. It's a standalone film. That's that. Absolutely. All right, uh, Jay, two more news stories that we're going to run through very quickly. I'm not even putting up the sound because these are going to be extremely quick. Uh, Henry Cavill says he's not done with Superman. He's never had a conversation with Warner Brothers and said he was done with Superman. Uh, he's willing to come back, and we look forward to I that I love day. it. I, I, my theory is it's kind of like an Obi-Wan Kenobi thing with you and McGregor. I hope. And Ewan. He knows something, but he can't year. say it. Exactly. He knows exactly. something, but he can't say yep. it. Yep. And I, I like that idea. Um, okay. I liked Henry Cavill as Superman. Me I too. like him Me as too. an actor. I look forward to seeing more of him as Superman. Despite the fact that I was not crazy about the movies that he was in, I liked both him and Ben Affleck as Batman. You know, I, I like those characters. So Give, give us a... a- <laughs> a Superman movie in the vein of Joker. Fuck Jay, it, I don't care. What if it's Black Adam? What if he's a cameo in Black Adam, man? Yeah. And that's his confirmation to be to, to be. He's returned. He's done. bring him in Shazam or, too. 
or we got Wonder Woman 2 coming out still. Wonder Woman 1984. It could be. Have that. him train Shazam. Whatever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Whatever. Just fucking. Just keep him. Keep I like him. him. I like keep him. him. He's a treasure. You can't replace him. He's, he's a, treasure. a treasure. He's a fucking God, treasure. And he's handsome as shit. As Jesus shit. God. Next news story. Jay, final news story. Uh, we finally have a director for RoboCop Returns. I'm very excited about this because this is the RoboCop that ignores everything except for the original RoboCop. And it picks up where the original RoboCop left off. Off. This is the original sequel that was that was supposed to be coming out for it. Yeah, and but so the, is Dark Fate. That's true. That's true. <laughs> You're right. You're right. And this this and director is going to be Abe Forsyth. And I look, I uh, I don't know what I'm looking forward to here, but I like the idea of going back to an original idea for RoboCop and just. Keep it simple, fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. Just keep it simple, stupid. Just he's 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 a cop and he's robotic, and there are some allegories towards Messiah complex and killing bad guys. Make it R, make it bloody, make it killer. Like that's it. That's all you gotta that's do. It. That's all you have to do. That's all you gotta do. That's the that's the movie we want to see. That's that's the one we fell in love with to begin with. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, also, Abe Forsyth, by the way, is the director of one of my favorite films that come out in 2019, Little Monsters. Jay, you and I did some movie homework this week. Let's hear a word from our sponsors and let's get into our movie homework. <laughs> Just a reminder, Super Movie Bros is brought to you by our good friends over at Blowfish. Blowfish, it's the only FDA-approved hangover cure. You can get your own hangover cure by heading over to 4hangovers.com using the promo code SMBFISH to get your 15% off of your order. Jay, I just purchased you some bourbon directly from a local distillery, a, a craft distillery, some Dark Hollow bourbon. Yes. I hope you're enjoying it if you've I had am, any of it Thank yet. you very much. And, and I, I am certainly reaching for the blowfish when I overindulged so, that night when I first got it because I haven't had it in quite some time. I bought myself some Reclamation, which is their their, their single malt. It's not a scotch because it's not made in Scotland, but it is their single malt. It's made with 300-year-old reclaimed wood, and it tastes like an ashtray took a dump in my mouth, <laughs> and I fucking love it. But I enjoyed it a little bit too much earlier today before you and I started recording, so just to pick myself up just before recording, I took myself a dose of Blowfish. So make sure that you head over to 4 Hangovers Dot com. Use the promo code SMBFISH. Get your 15% on. Now, on with the show. Welcome back to Movie Homework. So recently, uh, me and Jay were talking, and I realized that I'm a big cult movie horror fan, and Jay had never seen the classic 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre, directed by Toby Hooper, and he's been on my dick for months of the show, for all of you guys who have been listening for months now, uh, about watching Good Time with Robert Pattinson, Mm -hmm. so we decided it's been a long-ass time since we did some movie homework, and here it is. So we're going to get started with me, who watched Good Time, which is currently streaming on Amazon Prime. For anyone else who would like to stop this, go watch that movie and then listen to my impressions. So I told you about my brother, yeah? Something happened. I don't know exactly what. He's been arrested. He's being held at Rikers Island. What? Oh my God, that's awful. Make me cool. Just got to get him out of there before something bad happens. You could get killed in there. You always act from love. Damned always act. You need another 10 grand. You get another 10 grand, your brother will get out. All right, so Good Time was produced by A24, which we all know Jay suckles from the teat of. Mm -hmm. He absolutely loves everything that comes from A24. I do. But it was also directed by dual, that means two, dual directors on this one, Benny Safty and Josh Safty brothers. Yeah, the Safty brothers. Yeah, the Safty brothers. So, look, man, I, I, you've talked about the Safty brothers and everything they've made that 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 you've loved several times on the show. We got uncut gems. It's, it's pretty much which is still to come. Yeah, it's pretty much Safdie only brothers. heaven knows what. 
and then Good Time. And then now we have Uncut Gems starring Adam Sandler coming out And a bunch shortly. of video shorts, music videos, and things of the elf. They're very, they, um, very, New very New York guerrilla style filmmakers. You got it. Yep. That's what I picked up while watching this movie. I was like, all right, these are two guys that picked up a camera, walked around the streets of the Bronx, and were just like, let's, let's, let's make a movie. Who can we get? Robert Pattinson? He's down for any indie film. I felt like that while I was watching it. So let me be honest with you. The, the story, uh, I I like the story. It's the idea of a brother who's taking care of his uh, brother who suffers from ID, intellectual disability, and uh, he's also a career criminal per se. You know, yeah. early twenties. He's probably in his early twenties. Small petty criminal, of petty sorts. crime. Yeah, he uses you know him and his brother go and they they they, they rob a bank. His brother gets picked up for for the bank heist and gets taken into prison. And this is all about Robert Pattinson's character. Trying to earn enough money in one night to get his brother out of Rikers Island. And because he knows who his brother is. He knows that he can't. He knows exactly what's going to happen to him. Yes, if he stays in jail. Right. Uh, and you do see a little glimpse of that. And what it is from that point on is a dramatic take on a comedy of errors that will occur in his attempt to free his brother. But I don't, I mean, I know I am going to spoil it. Spoilers. In the end, the thing that he could do to save his brother is turn himself in. Because mm. his brother does not have the same mental capacities that he does to understand what he is doing when he commits a crime. So ultimately, he does get his brother out. He succeeds in his mission by being arrested. Yeah, finally being arrested. Yeah. By giving up, being arrested. Look, I'll be honest. This movie... It's haphazard to me. It is a series of a guy meeting different people who he uses in his in the end of his means and stuff like that. No scene ever really came together to me to be like anything that's a big standout. The only thing that's a standout is just the consistency of Robert Pattinson and how well he puts on a performance in this movie. And that's just about it, dude. It's really it. If if it was anyone, so you're not impressed by Robert the way Pattinson. they were able to stream this with the Safety Brothers as far as keeping that edge of your seat going, the streamline of it all, ja, no keeping it going was, throughout no the whole film. No point was on my edge of my seat. The entire time, I kept calling out how he was fucking up, when the fuck up was going to come to fruition, and when he was going to have to run. To me, it was no big deal. It was mm. no big deal. He's a great performance in it. I love Robert Pattinson in it. I love him in most things. But well, you- especially it's interesting for you probably because you just saw the Lighthouse and how you know how those are two very very different but very bold performances. I'd watch that twice more before I watch this again. Well, okay. I'd throw I'd throw High Life in there, which is a movie I was pretty lukewarm on. Right, right, and it, well, that's another. Very different film t- uh, yeah. and and performance. Um, but you, you told me like Robert Pattinson's performance is amazing, and it's like, well, yeah, he's a good actor. So like, I I'm like still him, but- I feel like I'm still trying to defend him to a lot of naysayers. I feel like there's a lot of people yeah, who I'm have not, not seen, but I'm his not one of films. Them. But you you haven't seen many of his films until this year. That's not true because like as you mentioned, yeah, I, I saw The Lighthouse this year, I saw High Life this year, but I, I've seen some other things too. I've seen The Lost City of Z, which he's he's yes. not a huge role in, but. I I, I like them in it. Remember me, which was a completely schlocky drama love story. That was that, a while ago. That has that, that has like a nine eleven hook to it and stuff like that. Yeah, but I still that was enjoy- fine. I, I kind of like right, it. But yeah. I still enjoyed him in it. Yes. And then I also he's great in the King. By the way, everybody, just so you know. So no, I I've never seen the Rover, but like I, I I've understood like the the acting power of robert patton's i've never doubted him right so to see him in this movie that's kind of like a okay story that the only thing i'm focusing on is his performance just made me go like all right like i i mean did i enjoy my time with it sure am i ever gonna go back to it no am i gonna sing its praises to anybody else i'm gonna be like dude you got a good time no but i will recommend people to who are sci-fi fans like myself to something like high life which he was in mm. earlier this year so i mean i'm just it, it's nothing that was that special i mean i'm sorry because i know you fucking love it well i know it's not i knew it for a fact it wasn't for everybody but I know it was something that i knew you i wanted you to watch and experience look just i know because you been, don't see these kind of films very often i know you You've been dipping your wick in it for fucking. Three I just fucking wanted you to years. see this movie. That's all. I'm not saying it's the greatest thing in the world. I'm and just I saying. and I did, but I didn't <laughs> like it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you I didn't sort like of. It. I didn't right. like it. All right. I even hated the end credit scene. I really did. Like the during credit scene. 
What? I really did. Thought it was too schmaltzy. Thought it was too much. I was like, I got, I got it from, I got it from the ending. I, I just got a completely different experience from this movie. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I think, I think a lot more people are gonna be on my side. I want to know, like, 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 I, I question how drunk were you when you watched it? How sappy? I've seen were you? it two or three times. Did you just break up with somebody when you watched it? Were you feeling a little, a little misty eyed? Were you a little fucking, uh, you know, you know, I like, I emotional? like diving into that well house. You know, that, that wheelhouse is right at my alley. Yeah, you're a sadomasochist, dude. You're an emotional <laughs> sadomasochist. You uh, love to torture yourself emotionally yeah. while watching this i felt nothing for this character i didn't even feel like like pity or shame from him in fact like like i, I i'm sorry shame is the only thing i felt like i just wanted to be like dude you're not supposed to like him he's a piece well, of shit i don't know i get that and that's why i said the performance was great because it's like oh i i get that like the second my, the second my brother who suffers from an intellectual disability was arrested for a crime that i forced him into i would have turned myself in and i and and i understand that that's the whole point of the movie is like that's not who i am as a person that's who he is as a person mm. But I didn't get drawn in by it. I didn't think that the character was written in a dynamic way that would be like, oh, he's someone I've really got. Well, I he's, really got to get behind. But he's a moron. But he's also street smart, so he knows how to think on his feet, and that's what he does. He keeps fucking up, but he keeps staying alive and keep moving and moving and moving forward and getting into these crazier and crazier situations, but no, still Jay, getting away with it. Jay, there's the difference try between and being get the cash. There's to get his brother being out. street smart, being street smart, and being. And having enough tenacity just to keep going, even when you're fucking beat. That's the difference. Yeah, he's he just he just. It's almost like he's a a deadbeat drug addict. Just keep going back he, and keep going back, keep going back. And he has got just enough sense to keep going, but it, it's all about his failures. I watch everything he does, and it fails. Jay, yeah. it fails. Everything he does is a failure. It does. I know. And then when it ends, and he's he's finally arrested, it's like. I mean, it had to end somewhere, but really, you just needed an ending, and that's what you did with it. I, I mean, I don't know what what else were you expecting from. I, I don't know. I don't know. Did you want him to like succeed, or were you like, was it one of those things where you're trying to find him? Jay, if I'm watching a movie about a guy who has a goal, yes, I want to see some conclusion to that goal, and technically, you get it. You do because get, I, he confesses, right, and and gets his brother released. So yeah, you, you technically you get the goal, but not in the way that you thought about it. But but it, I think that's. Where it works out because it's more rea- it's realistic, right? And he's a piece of shit, and he deserved to get arrested. Oh no, the realistic ending is probably the only thing I would really hold up, other than Robert Pattinson's performance. To go, okay, at least it ends in a realistic way. Yeah, and it's not it's not fantastical. However, like he didn't he didn't actually get when the I money say I didn't like it was that it was out. done in this point of view shot from another character who was standing on like a twelfth floor balcony looking down, watching it all happen. I wasn't watching it happen from Robert Pattinson's point of view. I would have loved to have seen the look of failure on his face mm. when it all finally came to fruition. I didn't get it. They show him in the back of the police car. A little bit car, in the cop car. But no, yeah. even then, he's still, like I could see that fucking cocky <laughs> eye of confidence, and I want to knock his bleached blonde hair. I want to smack him across the face and knock his fucking dick in the dirt and be like, <laughs> fuck you. I'm your parole officer now, motherfucker. <laughs> Fly straight or I'm going to fuck your shit up. <sighs> all right. All right. Let's move on. You watch Toby Hooper's uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, man. I, this is, now, this is a classic, right? I, okay. You yes. can't say the same about now, Good Time. Oh, right, right. <laughs> okay. I, I agree. What happened was true. The most bizarre and brutal series of crimes in America. <laughs> this is the movie that is just as real. <laughs> just as close. Crazy! You gotta make a Just as terrifying as being there. Even if one of them survives, what will be left? The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. After you stop screaming, you'll start talking about it. Okay, so this movie is is definitely something I know of. I've heard of it, of course. It's it's legendary. I never saw a frame. Maybe a poster, still shots, things like that. You've I've seen never Jessica s- Biel's I've- ass in the 2013 remake. That's what you've seen. Oh, oh I might have to see that one now. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, 
but no, it's it's one of those films where I've always known about it. I never got around to it because you guys know I'm not the biggest horror guy. Now, when it comes to stuff like Evil Dead, no. But it comes to this kind of stuff, more like a grounded. But old, I'm getting you there, right? Uh, uh, I'm getting well, you there. Well, just wait until you, last. You still house. need to massage me a little. Wait bit until the more. original Last House on the left. I think you're really going to enjoy that one. That's your next movie homework. But this one is in that deep, sadistic vein of horror. It's taut. It's hour and twenty two minutes long. It is brutally um, quiet. And simple in the beginning, the opening act, you know, there's just a bunch of kids in this van, hippie era, West Texas, just right. strolling around. It's a half hour. Trying to visit the, a grandfather's grave, this right. like random setting. It's a half hour of the de- of the desolation that is West, yes. Tes- West and, Texas. And, and that's a good feeling to, to sort of stir into you because right. you feel like you could do you're anything. You're going to be desolate with them. You could do anything in one of those fields and probably get away with it. Exactly. Yeah. And this really random, weird hitchhiker they pick up was startling, you know, not just because of the facial scars and or or if you want to call a birthmark or whatever it might be. Um, He was really, really jarring. And it was definitely shook up the van, shook up us as an audience. And it comes back full. Are we doing spoilers? What are we doing here? Sure. Go full spoilers. Okay. Dude, this is an old ass um, movie. Go full yeah, spoilers. That's what I thought. So this, this when he comes back. And into if you haven't mix, seen it and you're like, Jay, shame on you. Just fucking shame on you. True. And I agree with that because this is definitely something that I think everybody. It's free. Amazon Prime. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It's free Netflix, on Netflix. Netflix. Definitely. And so when we first get introduced with um, not just him, but the real main villain, Leatherface. <laughs> oh, look at me! Look at me! I'm Leatherface! I mean, this guy, motherfucker. Woo, baby. It was great. It was done in small doses. The costume is so simple and sadistic and fucked up with his his posture you know he's wearing i read that up that he was wearing lifts so he was a lot taller and bigger and uh, a little more clunkier as far as his behavior i think the thing that stands out to me most is it all worked out really the well the first moment that the girl walks up to that door the door opens and he grabs her and brings her in and then that sliding door just just mm. shuts and it's mm. like nothing that goes on back there is any good no any good and like it hits you with the visceralness of it because like leatherface just picks her up and fucking puts her on a hook oh almost just right it. away right away but it's not like it's not gratuitous it's not like it pulls in on the hook and, and shows you like a slow sure. the hook going into her and then all it does is pan it's out so quick and watch him turn on the chainsaw Right and and start chopping up her boyfriend's body, and you don't see right. any crazy blood. You don't see limbs getting nope. flown around. It was so it, the way it was executed and framed. It was all perfect. happened so fast that She's by the time still it's alive over, to witness it, right. oh. it happened so fast that by the time it's over, you're one. You, you you're not wondering what happened. You know exactly what happened, but you're just going, "Holy shit, that just happened!" Right, right. Like it's like this. It's like this shock moment where it's like that person, like, and then you imagine yourself being lifted up and having a hook being pushed between your shoulder blade and your spine going through your chest and then watching someone who you presumably love or at least care about deeply being chopped up in front of you and then later on you get thrown into a fucking freezer for your friends to fucking find you yeah it's dude it is it's what the fuck like it's 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 something that i don't know man this one was really something because when the twist happens when the other friends are trying to you know, escape and run away and find out what's going on. This old motherfucker gets them, yeah. brings them into the house. The hitchhiker comes back as well. And then all three of these monsters are just having the greatest time right? fucking with these people visiting on their premises. So, And then I haven't even talked about the grandfather or whatever it was. Right. Like, with this old, weird, crusty gray makeup on that I heard took and he so was the, long he was the to put ex- on. He was the expert killer. Mm-hmm. He the expert and he was the killer. one that trained them and, 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 be, you the know, order- and how they became. And this all comes down to being workers at a slaughterhouse yeah, and how they all, and stuff like They all that. just became cannibalistic monsters right. in West Texas. And it's so good. Just the setting of it all and just how subtle and how beautifully framed and shot it is because that ending 
the way they end it and how she gets away and how she tried to escape with the the the, the truck wheeler and now that failed and then all of a sudden this pickup truck came right, and then she I, hopped in on that and that and now the 18 wheeler guy has to fend for himself but i love that i love the fact that like you know even in that moment you realize that like leatherface is not a proficient killer no he either does it in his first moment or like he's completely inept there's something he he has intellectually he wrong in, with him he needs to be um in close quarters i know it's all about shock and awe if he doesn't if he doesn't get them when he w- at that well, first like, initial shock exactly and like i said he's, he's a very inefficient he's killer. a very clunky guy you know he's awkward and they referenced to before in the first act as far as they liked killing right with the the blow to the head right and it goes back to honestly like his inefficiency as a killer kind of goes back to what this is derived from which is ed gein who was you know a lot of people think of ed gein he's this pre a lot of people are like oh he's one of the most prolific serial killers ever existed in america wrong ed gein killed two people like, mm. like that, that's really it. He killed two people. He was a grave robber and he had a macabre sense about him where he would rob graves and he would make suits out of people, mostly women that he would wear and stuff like that, right. which is very apparent by Leatherface wearing a person's face that's not his own and stuff like that. But it's very clear he suffers from some sort of disability. We'll say I call it inbred. <laughs> but- <laughs> Right, uh, like th- this takes what like Deliverance did with its down, 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 and its ass raping, and it takes it a little bit further, and it goes down, 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 and it hits that power chord right. on you, <laughs> and that's what this movie was, man. Yeah, and and the the final shot was so good with the sunset, and he's just frustrated, and he's wheeling his chainsaw around. He lost his query, and it's just that's it. It's over. And it just cuts to the credits. And so it's like, good. oh, my God, just right on the right. She, the girl escapes. Someone escaped, which is great. But it was thrilling right to the very end. And then you see this majestic horror figure with this beautiful backdrop just wheeling in frustration. And it just cuts. Jay, this- it was like it was almost perfect setup for a huge franchise. You know, it was, but forward, it wasn't know? a huge franchise right away. This well, came out I mean, in 1974. The next one comes out in like 1986, 1987. Yeah, but uh, this was this was an era where they didn't do that kind of I, thing. I understand, I understand. But then like the, the, the subsequent sequels that were tied to this original one were awful after the second one. And then we got a bunch of remakes in the early 2000s, which really were ho-hum. I never really liked them that much. But still to this day, this movie was so good, so prolific that people still talk about Leatherface as one of like the top four top five horror icons of of America like this is one of the top horror icons and it all stems from this movie not any of the sequels not any of the remakes it's this movie and I think you picked up on everything that that there was to really enjoy about I'm happy you enjoyed it I'm sorry I didn't like good time as much as you did uh, but like I'm happy that you liked this i'm happy that you liked it i'm I'm happy that you enjoyed it it was a great it was a great little watch and i hope i can get you to watch more like quiet little horror films cult classics like last house on the left and and that's something that that, in the future that i i probably would because yeah. if it's something more in these kind of veins, I like. Like I told you, like I don't like porn. I, I not. Oh, well, I like torture porn. porn, right? But the torture porn stuff. I would never. All like the it, bloody, gory crap. I like to feel immersed I would into never, a world. I like to feel a sense of reality with it all. I would never assign you like hostile, right? Because hostile is just shocking. All that's all nah, it is. Yeah. And I know you wouldn't like that. I would never give you a Cannibal Holocaust for the same reason, <laughs> or 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 uh, the Green Inferno for it's just basically a remake of Cannibal Holocaust. I would never give you. Any of those, but like I, I feel like I, I have an idea. After you've told me so many times, like Evil Dead Two is not my bag. I'm like, all right, schlock, horror, shock, and all. That's not Jay's thing. No. Jay needs a thing that has a little bit more substance to it. It's a little bit more of a slow burn. And I think I think I've got your horror button now, and I'm gonna be fucking pressing it for <laughs> your movie homeworks. All right, I'm on board with that then. So that's gonna do it for Super Movie Brothers tonight. Yes, thank you. Uh, if we had different opinions than you thought of 
the two movies that we had for movie homework, you can reach out to me on Twitter at Super Movie Pod. And also for me, I am on Facebook, Super Movie Bros Podcast, and Instagram, Super Movie Bros. And of course, if you're enjoying this podcast, please make sure that you head over to our Patreon. That is patreon.com slash Super Movie Bros Podcast on there. There you can pledge just $1 and you can receive all the additional content that's over there. Currently, me and Lauren are in Disney World. That's why you're getting these episodes in all different you know, ways than we normally do it. And you can listen to me and Lauren's top five rides that you can ride at all four parks that are available to you at Disney World. So uh, head over there to get that. We talk about the great fun that we've had at Disney World. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but we have literally 16 other episodes for you to check out. So if you're enjoying the show, head over there. And also, if you are liking the show uh, at the top of whatever podcast app you're listening to us on, you could probably click subscribe and subscribe to us and make sure that mm-hmm. you don't miss an episode of Super Movie Bros. And uh, of course, if you're able to leave us a review, we ask that you please, 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 please leave us a review because that's what helps us get seen. That's what helps us get found. Leave us a review on the podcast listening app that you're listening to us on. And that will help us grow. That will help us get seen by others. That that will help this show out, make it better for you as the listener. So yep. I want to thank all of you guys for listening. Have a great one. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.